Hello, railway men and women. Today is a slightly different video from my normal engines running on my layout. Um, today, we are going to be... Let me put her on the track so she's at least a little presentable. Today, we're going to be servicing my LMS Patriot. Um, if you haven't figured it out already, um, I do cuss in my videos because that's the person who I am. That's just who I am. Um, so be warned if you are a child or someone who doesn't like that per se. This isn't really the video for you because I do cuss. But stick around for my tamer videos of just engines running on my way out. I don't cuss in any of those, obviously. Um... So yes, we are going to service my LMS Patriot. And I don't think she's really in the need of servicing, but there is one thing I want to try and fix. The back, this back wheel, and I think these two, they're all, uh, this one's all right. But these two back wheels here are absolutely terrible, and for some reason, they're really sticky. And to the point where this middle one, while it's running around the layout, will go dragging along the rail. And I don't like that very much, so we're going to try and fix that. So basically, what we're doing here is to figure out what screws take off the body of the locomotive. Because I have kept bodies on engines as I've serviced them. Don't do this, because that's how you break the bodies. I've done it. Um, now it doesn't seem to want to tell me about how to remove the body, and I don't know why. Uh, let me see, give me a second. To remove the locomotive body, remove bogey, oh dear, remove the bogey, chassis screws as shown as figure seven. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, gently ease downwards and forwards to disengage from the rear of the loco as figure eight. All right, simple enough. There's a reason I'm reading the instructions. I've never opened this engine before. So this is new to all of us. <laughs> so I got my flathead screw here and we're not taking the uh, body of the engine off just quite yet. I want to remove something out of the tender, which is a pre-made coal load I have made myself. Um, and I like to do that because if I flip her over and the coal load comes flying out, it could shatter into pieces. Which, that's a terrible mess to clean. There's a screw on the inside of this part, but the screw is right here in between the um, front driving wheel and the back guiding wheel. So, it's the front back guiding wheel. You, you get it. So, we're going to take our screwdriver and unscrew it. Okay. <laughs> Fucking, I need a bigger Phillips. Give me a second. I thought I had the correct size Phillips, but I do not. Small, we'll take a flat head just in case I can't find a Phillips. Small, too big. Way too small. All right, I don't know where all the Phillips have gone, but I got a flat head that should fit. Fuck, I dropped it. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. You shouldn't use flat heads, but I just drooled. Uh, <laughs> yes, I know, but I don't like it. No, oh, this screw doesn't want to come out, does it? There it goes. Can I get her loosened? Now we're going to have a little tray. See a little tray. Now we're just going to set our screws and things in because you should do that. And yes, I know that you shouldn't use a flat head for Phillips because you can and there because you can um strip the uh, screw. But I was stripping it with my two small Phillips. So there's our little bogey. That rules quite well actually. So I don't think we're gonna have to look at that. And now that we have the front bogey off, there is a screw right here. 
I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here. And what we're going to do is unscrew that screw. And let me guess, my Phillips is too small for this screw as well. It is not, thank God. I'm just going to unscrew this screw. Magnetic screwdriver. So we're just going to slip the screw off of the screwdriver. Okay, now flip her over very, very easily. Um, and we are going to... Ah, there it goes. So we're going to slip the engine, engine's body off. I like to do this because I've broken, as I've explained. Um, it doesn't seem to want to come off <laughs> of its body. So give me a second. Usually this does, it is hassleless. Um, unless there's another screw I should have removed. I didn't check. That's why you check the instructions to make sure that you know what you're doing. And as I said, this is a first to me. If I had my J15, my Neller Hall, any other engine I've taken apart, I would have this already apart. But this is a first. Um, let me see. Okay. It does not mention a third screw I have to remove. So we're just going to have to finagle this engine off of its body. <laughs> Wait. Gentle. Coming off. There we are. Um, this thing doesn't have any metal on it. This entire body isn't metal, but I think there is, I feel a huge weight, and I think it's a smoke box. And there is something in the boiler that's causing all that weight. But here's our body, and here is our lovely, lovely chassis. So we're going to set the body because we don't need to mess with it. So we have our empty coal bunker and our off body. And that's fantastic. I am going to reset the... There we go. Um, to look at the engine. So now, and I don't care if you can't see, this is just for fun. Now, uh, let's remove the tender from the engine. And that is a simple job. We're going to get a bigger flathead and we're going to just unscrew the screw if it wants to unstick ah, there it goes. like I said this engine hasn't been taken apart since it's been put back together uh, actually that's a lie because the man I bought it from which was from a show then sorry I'm gonna interrupt myself there is a there's a plug here please remove this plug this plug is, actually, I'm going to explain this plug. What this plug is, it's both for DCC chips, which I have to buy and put into my engines. Do not fall. Yeah, also, this video is going to be all over the place, and this plug is a pain in the ass. I've removed it before. It's a pain in the ass to remove. Come on now. Pain in the ass. Um, but... That's just the hobby. The entire hobby is a pain in the ass. And don't take that wrong, because I love this hobby to bits. There it goes. I love this hobby to bits. Now our tender is removed from our locomotive. Anyway, as I was saying, what was I saying? Um, okay, so that plug is inside of the tender. There is a chip in here for both to close the circuit in the engine and to... Um, Put a DCC chip in. I have a DCC remote, but I fell for a misconception. The DCC ready on all Hornby boxes means that it's ready for a DCC chip, not that it is ready to be ran on DCC. Fantastic little bit of trivia. So, I got this fucking DCC remote for Christmas, and guess what? I couldn't use it. Great. So I have to buy all the chips first. Which is a cop? When you hear DCC ready, can you blame me for thinking that it was meant that it was ready to run on DCC? No, you can't blame me for that. Um, so, 
The engine seems alright. We could clean her off, clean the wheels off, lubricate her, maybe open the bottom plate to see how all the bearings are. But we're going to set the engine aside. Because the reason I'm doing this is the fucking tender. And there's a reason that I'm cussing. Because the sound it makes scraping along the, the layout is absolutely distressing. Give me a second. Do I have a clean one? Yes. Take this little cup here for the tender screws because I like to keep things, come on, slightly organized. All uh, right, as I was saying, the scraping of the wheels, because it literally drags its tender wheels on the track is horrendous. And I don't want that, so we're going to take it apart. Um, something tells me I have to remove the coupling because there's a hidden screw. There is, but I'm not sure if this screw opens the plate for the tender or not. I want to take the wheels out. There they go. Okay, so no, I don't have to undo this stupid screw. Or maybe I do, because they're not coming out still. We're taking out the screw, and we're seeing what happens. I need a smaller plate. So very simple. Uh, just remove the screws. Not very hard. Not as hard. Oh dear. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't let it explode. Wait, how many wheels do I got? I have one, two. Oh, the third one is still in the tender. So. That's a fun sound. Um, so it just looks like the bearing could be cleaned. And the pickups as well. There's hair! There's hair in the bearing! They're little, they're little plastic bearings, see? This is the bottom. Just little, what can I click, click, click. Just little plastic bearings holding in the axles of the wheel. And everyone knows plastic isn't the most fun. Metal is the funnest. But this engine is absolutely fantastic, Hornby. Wheels always love doing that to me. Jumping around and bouncing away and things like that. So I think we could, we're gonna clean out the bearings. Actually looks quite clean. So that, I've only had this for a couple months, but it's just the wheels were just not having fun. I don't understand why. They're okay with the thing off. Maybe the thing's a bit tight. But they were just dragging along, and it's not fun when wheels are dragging. So we're gonna clean it off because there is some. Let me see if I can get some example. Can see, you can't look at my face. Look at it. Fuck me. <laughs> You're not going to see. Sorry, 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 sorry. But my shirt is killing me. Um, there's blackness in the axles of the wheels. I think someone tried to add, and it might have been me, I don't remember, tried to add oil to these plastic bearings at some point. But so we're just going to take a Q-tip. We love our Q-tips. We're going to take a Q-tip, and I like to use good old-fashioned alcohol, rubbing alcohol to clean my things. And it's absolutely fantastic of getting rid of the muck that this leaves. This is model train oil, um, to be precise. La Belle 108 Synthetic Oil Multipurpose Lightweight Plastic Plastic Compatible I'm going to use it on the bearings Anyway, Plastic Compatible, that's nice to know I love this oil I've had this oil for my 
three years of running this engine. I, I'm not this engine, of running model trains, and I have three years, three years of this oil. And I use it a lot. There's muck on the wall. I don't like that. But I use it quite a bit. And I'm knocking everything around. Oh my. I use it quite a bit. And I've, I, I'm, I'm only about half, a little bit under halfway through with it. It's, it, it's, it, it's lasted me for ages. Anyway. So we're going to unscrew our alcohol here. This alcohol is a bit low. So I'm going to tip it to bring the alcohol to me. Dip the cotton swab into said alcohol. And what we're going to do is just rub down the bearings and get all this fantastic gunk off. And a clean bearing, I'm, these are axles, not bearings. A clean axle is a happy axle. And we love our axles. We're going to rub down the, uh, the side of the wheels as well for a good reason because there is pickups in the tender of this engine, and clean wheels means that it will pick up the best amount of electricity. Um, very simple, just rub it down, and you're gonna let it dry for a bit, because alcohol, being alcohol, it loves to evaporate. So when you're done cleaning, it just evaporates away. And that's fantastic. And it doesn't leave any gooey substance or anything that I have found, because it's just alcohol. But it's a fantastic use to get rid of the oil. Fantastic way to get rid of oil and oily things. We're gonna redo the wheels of this. And this wheel as well. These wheels look fantastic, by the way. I love them. I'm gonna put them against the cheek of my face so you can see them. Look at those. Those are cool. I like those. The spokes on those are fantastic. Fantastic wheels. So we're just gonna rub it down. Make sure that we get all the oil off. Final good set of wheels. Stop rolling away on me. New. Well, that's what they're built for. <laughs> so that's all we're going to do. Let's just rub everything down. Make sure that everything's been caught up. And yeah, that's our cotton swab afterwards. And it was like this before. So, there was gunk there. Gunk that needed to be clean. So we're going to take our tender. And we're going to clean off all of the, unless our cotton swab doesn't want to, we're going to at least give a single wipe to all of our pickups, just to get any gunk that's on the pickups off. Because my layout is awfully gunky. Because I have pets. Uh, if you have cats or dogs, there's hair everywhere and I can't get rid of it. All right, then we're gonna, I think we're gonna uh, not use a new cotton swab, but the other side, should have just left this on, stop it, stop. Where, where are you guys going? Don't believe me, that's a fantastic idea. Let me just put them on their side, <laughs> my, my. Um, okay, so we're gonna wet the other side of our cotton swab. Don't we love cotton swabs? I love cotton swabs. Anyway, and then we're going to just get all it. Gunk out of there. There's some hair. There's some oil grease. Uh, the, but when your oil turns black, uh, you can usually see it on the bearings of the side rods of the, your engine. When the oil turns black, that means it's cooked. It's done. It's it's lived its life. And now it's creating friction instead of creating lubrication. That is our gun swab. It's not too dirty, but it's a little dirty. Meaning there was something there to clean off. I'm gonna clean off these plates as well. So plates on the inside of this now. But we're gonna give the uh, axle housings a bit of a, a wipe down as well. Just to be absolutely safe. Okay. So, the uh, alcohol on the tender has seemed to have dried, so this is what we're going to do. Since this is enjoys plastic, as it says on the bottle, we're going to place the wheels back on, making sure they're happy. 
with the pickups because if they're not happy, well, we're not gonna have fun now, are we? Oh, that's a neat. So on the middle one here, there's one pickup on this side, and then there's another pickup. So instead of having two pickups that are like this, right, touching the sides of the wheels, has one pickup going out this way, this direction, and one coming out this direction. That's fantastic. I don't know if that's what's causing the drag on this poor wheel. It very well might be. Does this wheel not clip in? The other one did. Apparently it doesn't. I tried. <laughs> I tried! That one works. So we're gonna lubricate the bearings. Very slight. Just a bit. That's a lot of lubrication. Give him a spin. It's a bit better. That is better than what we had before. Place the bottom plate. Sorry, I was doing it off camera. My God, I'm a terrible YouTuber. Sorry, um, place, place the plate back in. I hate that. Hello, and welcome to the layout. I don't know how well you can see me, but I'm here. Hello. Uh, and I did check before I uh, turned on the camera, but she does run, thankfully. So, we got a little passenger train here for um, a video I recorded. Bring her around. going backwards over that curve, but I know. Now, that middle wheel of the tender is slightly still unhappy, but before it didn't even, it didn't even turn. It just scraped, and it's slightly dragging now, but it's actually spinning, so that means I did slightly fix it, and the other wheels are running as smooth as butter, so... That means I did something. Oh. Hopefully that couple. Yeah. Ah, wait, wait, wait. It coupled idiotically. I've never seen a coupling ever be that dumb. <laughs> All right, here we are, let's go. And there she goes. As beautiful as ever, my favorite. Let her run for a bit. That is 50% power. She's awfully fast. Okay. She's running great. I'm happy with it. So hopefully you enjoyed this weird, weird video. <laughs> It's unlike most of my stuff on here, but it's not a tutorial. Please don't follow what I did, because I wasn't really good at it. Mostly because I've never opened this engine before, so all of that was just completely new to me, and it was on camera. To be honest, I should have serviced something that I've actually serviced before. Um, but that was awfully fun, and uh, my engine's alright, and she still runs, which is a good thing. So... Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.